What we're really learning and what I've spent a good part of my life learning and sharing is how to facilitate natural healing. And the reason I say that is because what's very obvious if you begin to learn that and practice it and understand it deeply is that natural healing is nothing different than the process of awakening and becoming liberated, so to speak, enlightened, same thing, completely natural. Now I do, I do say this frequently, but it's important to keep this in mind because there's so much programming and conditioning that we have around feeling like we're responsible for our healing or our enlightenment, our happiness. And on a relative sense, in certain ways, that's obviously true. <clears throat> but in the deeper sense, those attitudes can really interfere with healing and liberation, actually, and can make it a lot harder. Um, the truth is the natural movement of awareness is completely natural. It's not based on one's beliefs or one's what how one has been influenced by teachings or teachers or practices and so forth. As I often say that practice is really, practice is not about getting healed or enlightened. That's the personal desire, which is perfectly normal and healthy. That's, that's the ego's wanting something. But the process of healing and transformation or the process of awakening are completely natural, like, like a, uh, a flower growing in a garden. Okay. It's a, a rose. It will just, it has its own wisdom that produces that beautiful uh, bl blossom and that wonderful fragrance. And you are exactly the same as that rose. Um, so what we need to learn is, and this is very hard for egos to understand because we can be so frustrated on the path. We can tap into presence, begin to experience profound states, connection and so forth. But then what we find because there's more space and awareness, so to speak, we begin to become more aware of unprocessed unconscious material from our past, from our wounding traumas and so forth that get triggered and, and uh, projected and mirrored in, in, in reality. And so the, the real teaching is that enlightenment and, and awareness, ha those, are, those are happening naturally. That's what brought you here. That's what brought you to the so-called paths is that movement within you. It, nobody, it wasn't because somebody convinced you. It was like a friend was sharing with me about these cave paintings in Africa 17,000 years ago that depict Kundalini energy and connection to the source 17,000 years ago. You know, they didn't have the Bhagavad Gita. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have, you know, the Upanishads. They didn't have any of that. Yeah, this is, this is our nature, actually. Our nature is to be one with life in a profound way and to live life ordinarily as just you and me. And the truth is we are all equal. On this, in this realm, everyone is equal. Obviously on the relative realm, th there's nothing but difference actually, uniqueness. But in this realm, we are absolutely one. So that's why these meetings, if you are able to and open to them in a deeper way, which I know many of you are, there's a connectedness and a power that's really extraordinary. But it's so important to take, to be responsible for what that is and to understand it in the context of your whole life. Otherwise it becomes an end gain to just be in presence all the time, which a lot of teachings focus on, which is fine. Uh, the direct path, non-dual path, so forth, focus on awareness of awareness. And I had that training for many years and it's very important training. However, I think what's really important to know is that practice or really understanding how to live fully as a human being, and uh, it begins with awakening. It doesn't end with it. 
So when you have the source available to you, then you can begin to find out how to face your own internalized fundamentalism, your own unconscious beliefs that are actually imprisoning you and keeping you stuck in some way. It gives you the uh, the non-self realm that isn't taking it personally, that can begin to question beliefs, that can begin to question what you were taught. I work with so many people who around the world who are, just makes me want to cry. I would say just crippled with shame that they were taught to, you know, they, they, they were taught to repress their feelings or they were told that their feelings were sinful or wrong or bad. And the truth is feelings are just the natural weather system of the human organism. And when we learn to be with them as we work with here in satsang, and I do in my private work with people too, obviously, <clears throat> when we are able to bring awareness to what's coming up, we begin to see that those energies are just, pre they just are energy. They're just energy. And they go back, it's, it's, it's almost like they recycle. It's like, it's, in a way we're doing gardening and recycling basically. And so the way you bring attention to the process really facilitates that ecosystem of you. And that eco ecosystem of you is actually the ecosystem of everyone and everything. And it's, I have to say, it just gets more and more amazing in my own discovery, more and more mind blowing more and more inspiring, fulfilling, and just, well, it's why I really uh, so look forward to being with you because this realm that we share together is just the realm of mystery and healing and transformation and literally miracles. And now today with the way the world is and what's going on, we need all the help we can get in the deepest way possible because let's face it, what has always been true is now more true than ever. And that is that we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know how things are going to unfold. And the truth is we never have. And so this, I just wanna tell you how much I honor you, respect you, actually deeply care about you and love you because it's hard work to face yourself. <laughs> it just is. It's hard work to be a human being. I have students here today who are fighting COVID who have had a horrible time with this illness. And, and I know people who've lost their loved ones and it's, it's, it's a devastating time in our human history, obviously. So, so important to cultivate sensitivity, patience, understanding, and then work with the judgments, work with the reactions, work with the one who shuts down and cuts off distances and separates from not wanting to be hurt, not wanting to be taken advantage of, not wanting to be um, uh, a f fear of vulnerability, because that could mean um, more suffering. So it's natural as a human being to avoid suffering and to seek comfort and pleasure, obviously. But in this path, we have to learn how to create the space. And we do with awareness, really. That's really the loving, the, uncon the, the unconditional loving space of awareness that, that's necessary. The other thing I want to say is it's so important that you have an understanding of what you feel, even your impulses or your compulsions, that it's really important to have a space where you can allow whatever they are. I'm not saying act out, but I'm saying let those feelings, let those compulsions, let whatever that is, reactivity, allow that 
in a space that's free of conclusions, judgments, comparisons, analysis, and trying to fix it or figure it out or get rid of it or enlighten it. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Um, <laughs> they're actually the raw material of transformation. So the purpose of spirituality is to become fully human and it's a lifelong journey. It's your whole, whole life. It's not just, oh, I'm gonna get to the mountaintop of freedom and then I'm done. If you believe that, and many people do, and if you delude yourself into that, which I hate to say many people do, that can be very, very, very problematic, not just for you, but for many people, because you have power at that point. And power without an understanding of what I'm talking about is extremely imbalanced and very, very dangerous. As we know, as we can see, and I'm not gonna talk about you know what, but um, it's, it plays out in our lives on a lot of levels. This is why it's very important to develop the proper, really reverence and respect for what we are all tapping into here. Because it's none of us personally, it's, you might say the collective unconscious <laughs> or the oneness. Mm -hmm.